And I can tell you, as we added farms, now we have five full, five farms and other three or four in process. And I can tell you that the accuracy is very good. We, we were able to create an algorithm that predicts uh, feed intake, not only in one specific farm, but also in other uh, farms, which which the, the algorithm is not trained on. Hi, hey everyone. Welcome to the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, brought to you by Wisenetics. I'm Todd Calloway, and we are dedicated to bringing you the latest insights and discussions in the field of dairy nutrition in the industry. So get ready to expand your knowledge and stay ahead with today's episode. So we have a really exciting speaker looking at some issues that Milk has found. So we have Dr. Ronnie Knight Yair, who is here from Milk. So, Ronnie, it's great to meet you. I've never had the pleasure to meet you before today, so I'm kind of excited to hear some of what you guys have going on. So, will you tell everybody a little bit about you? Yeah, I'm Ronnie. Um, I grew up in Israel here in, uh, in the kibbutz. And, uh, since I was a kid, I worked with farm animals, uh, turkeys, dairy cows, uh, fish, fish ponds, and it led me to, to PhD in, in uh, animal science at Hebrew University, and later on, uh, uh, I spent uh, a couple of years at uh, at Michigan State, uh, postdoc for uh, with uh, Dr. Michael Allen um, about their nutrition. And since I came back to Israel about six, seven years ago, uh, uh, I'm working in Afi Milk. I work in the research group where we do the the basic uh, research, and obviously, my focus is nutrition uh, applications. So. For example, what we're going to talk about efficiency. The next giant leap in dairy profitability is here. Introducing AffiCollar feed efficiency service from AffiMilk, the first sensor to accurately measure individual cow dry matter intake. Combined individual feed consumption with milk production data to get profitability insights never before available. Hear from producers who are using it to make a big impact on profitability and sustainability at AffiMilk.com. That's A-F-I-M-I-L-K.com. Okay, well, that's great to hear. And I'm sorry for you having to work with Mike Allen for a while, but <laughs> he's a good friend of mine and he's a wonderful guy, brilliant mind. So, you know, we are talking about feed efficiency and you guys have developed some new technology. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, well, uh, I can tell you a little bit about it, both uh, in terms of the idea behind it, the, the, the research, the, the uh, applicative research also, and uh, how it looks now, uh, you know, in our software. So basically, f feed intake and feed efficiency, it's a hot topic, and there's a lot of research done about this, mainly about how to predict or uh, individual feed intake. And this is something which has limited success so far. Uh, mostly it's uh, formulas that are related to the energetic or to the lactational status of the animal, like uh, milk weight and milk fat and the taste of milk and the weight uh, of the animal and so on. But again, the accuracy of these, uh, of most of these formulas is not, I would say it's, it's mediocre. It's not suitable for a lot of the applications, it can be used in the farms, theoretically, which I'm going to talk about probably later on. But um, on the other hand, there's a lot of data currently uh, in dairy farms, which is not used in most of these uh, uh, works, most of these DMI prediction equations. And what I'm talking about is sensor data, more specifically, color sensor data. There's a lot of data that uh, from colors, uh, we have AFI color, but probably also other uh, colors out there. We can get really good understanding of the behavior of the animal during the day. So it is kind of a different approach of how to uh, to predict feed intake, not only by 
the energetic and the other status of the animal, but also by how it behaves, how much time is eating, or even go deeper than just the time. Um, so that was our idea. We have a, a big source, a big data source, which is not properly utilized so far. And if we can use it in combination with the other already existing data, like milk data and this milk and so on, then we can get a better prediction, a better understanding of the feed intake of the cow. So that was the general idea behind our research. Okay. Well, can you walk me through some of that research that went into this development? Basically, we are working on this for four years, pretty much, a little, maybe a little more. And I can tell you that the, 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 it relate, it, we can divide it into two main parts. One is the basic research, and the other is the applicative research in the field, in commercial farms. So uh, the basic was how to predict feed intake. So in order to do that, we had to collect individual feed data from multiple research institutes, universities, Michigan State, uh, British Columbia, uh, and others around the world. And we had to go deep into the color data of all these cows, get, really do a lot of work, how to use raw, raw eating, rumination data to, to really characterize the behavior of the animal and to integrate it uh, um, so we can use it uh, uh, to predict feed intake. And I can tell this is something that was, we started with one farm and we had to do an initial model, initial uh, predictive model. And, we, we, and our initial results were excellent, but we, always, we, all, we also knew that one farm model is probably, uh, we want something generic, not local. So we had, our, the test was if we can get an algorithm or an equation that is created in one farm and to use it on other farms and then and the, the accuracy will still be the same, then we know we're, we're heading in the right direction. And I can tell you as we added farms, now we have five full, five farms and other three or four in the process. Um, I can tell you that the accuracy is very good. We, we were able to create an algorithm that predicts uh, feed intake not only in one specific farm but also in other uh, farms which which the, the algorithm is not trained on. I can also go into a little bit about the, the applicative side. Once we got this, we had to go back to the field. We, we spent about two years in some kind of a pilot stage, I would say. We went to about 60 to 70 farms around the world, 12 countries, uh, 70 plus thousand cows. And, and we, we, we used our data there, we used our algorithm, and we, we got the, the farmers involved. And the idea was that not only we are able to provide this data, but we need to know how to use it, how to use it when, and what, what are the preferences of the farmers. So that, I would say, was the applicative side of the research. Well, that leads me to a great question of, you know, how can a normal everyday dairy producer, how do you think this can help provide value to them? Yeah, so I would say that the two major applications are uh, culling and breeding. So in terms of culling, this can be the easiest way to use it is in terms of uh, timing of culling. Let's say you have a list of all the cows which are already marked as do not breed, as can, uh, culling candidates, and you just need to decide when. Our system, using uh, our feed intake algorithm, it provides the average uh, feed efficiency and also the, the profitability or income over feed of each cow. Basically, we can take all these cows and rank them, but which cow is the most profitable and which cow is not. This is very easy for every dairy manager to understand. You just take the, you know, the cows which are making less money. They're probably the best. They should be called earlier. So, and, and maybe the more important uh, um, side or the application 
is uh, reading, reading decisions. Basically, we, what we provide is aggregated data of feed, in, of feed intake and uh, feed efficiency and profitability of feed for cows in specific time periods. We, from the pilot stage, we learned we, which are the most important time periods for decisions for the farmers. I would say probably the, the, the main one is just before the first insemination in each lactation. So we had to find which the exact time period, which is ideal for farmers to both get the data before they need to make the decision, but also for it to be as accurate as possible and as longer period as possible. So it can be as representative as possible uh, of the cow. And so I would say that's the most usable. Imagine a list of all the cows before first insemination. And for all of them, you get the aggregated uh, feed, uh, feed intake and income over feed for the first uh, two months postpartum or from, from 21 days to, to, uh, to 56 days is more specific. And this way the, the, the farmer can rank them based on their efficiency, based on their profitability and decide uh, what is the correct, uh, I would say, the breeding strategy for each cow. So let's say the most profitable and efficient cows are probably the ones you're going to want to provide uh, sex semen to, or uh, maybe uh, they can provide uh, embryos for transfer or, and so on. And on the other hand, the, the low-end cows, they are maybe candidates for uh, beef semen. So that's the main, the, the most important application, I would say. So you can really start to use profitability as a selection index, which would be interesting to see. We are going in the direction of adding extra data to improve our prediction. So, for example, we are not uh, using uh, uh, new components at all for prediction currently, even though it's probably uh, something that will improve our prediction, just in terms of the data we have. Same goes to, to animal weight. Um, so this is one direction. The second one I would say is widening the scope. So for example, we, all the farms we use to train this algorithm and to validate it are all hosting farms. We want to have, um, to validate it also in Jersey and crossbreeds and see if we need to make some adjustments for, for other breeds and also for other, uh, management uh, styles such as grazing, which you currently don't do, we do TMR, and also uh, for dry cows, which currently we are predicting for milk, for milking cows, not for dry cow cows. So there's there's a lot of things we are working on adding to this, uh, to the scope of this uh, algorithm. We work with, in this project, with many universities, and um, some of them were kind enough to give us our, their feed intake data. Um, but what we also want is, is we want this to be validated uh, outside of Afimilk. So we're also providing other universities which are not yet in our, in our uh, database. We're providing them with, with our colors and, and uh, our predictions and we want them to use it to validate it for themselves, both for them to use in research and, I mean, to have a stamp of approval um, outside of, of AFNU. Oh, yeah. Now that's, and that's the best way for research because independent research is the most critical because that shows that it's real. I, I think that's wonderful. Thank you for being here today. And that concludes another episode of the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt Podcast presented by Wisenetics.